Hi, and welcome back to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce Member Connection. Yeah, you know the deal. I'm excited. You know, when you see people building their dream, you know, entrepreneurs, that, that's, not, that's not a word to be taken lightly. A lot of people want to start their own business, but everybody don't have what it takes. And I'm here with a gentleman that has what it takes, Mr. Felton Brown. How are you, brother? Hey, brother, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me here. Absolutely. Alpha International Transportation. Yes, sir. So, what, Felton Brown, tell folks, who, who is Felton Brown before we get started about, you know, this entrepreneurship and yes. this whole um, ro move into being an entrepreneur? Well, first and foremost, Felton Brown is a, is a strongly spiritual guy, man. You know, I give all praise and honor to the Most High God, Yahweh in Heaven. And uh, I'm a family man, I'm a loving husband and a great father, and I'm a community activist for my community, the great city of Opelika. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. You know, I've, you know, we've come to get to know one another, and you definitely are engaged with the community. I want to thank you for everything that you do. Um, but being an entrepreneur, what made you decide, you know, a lot of folks, you know, they get up, they go get a job. But what made you decide that you wanted to be an entrepreneur and then get in the transportation business? You know, entrepreneur for me came uh, naturally. Uh, my parents tell me that uh, when I was born down in Homestead at James Archer Hospital, uh, that after they gave me back to the Lord, that they spoken to me that I would be a successful entrepreneur. So um, I grew up through life uh, doing some of the things that many kids in the inner city did, playing sports, uh, getting involved in music, um, you know, all the things that kids go through in the inner city, uh, I went through that. And then I, I faced a tragic injury um, when I was in high school. I broke my neck playing football, and, and they told me I wouldn't move or feel anything from the neck down. So at that point, I had to figure out um, how I was going to, you know, uh, support myself and, and the family that I desired. So um, uh, what I did was I realized that my body would no longer serve me to create those opportunities that I had to use my mind. So entrepreneurship was the next thing that I knew that I can do and thrive at once I was able to, you know, get my body back to a point where I can get some things done. So I went on to college, man, and, uh, and got a degree in business. I, I went over to, to uh, Fort Memorial University for sure. about a year, and then I transferred to University of Phoenix, only because of the the, uh, the disability aspect of being able to do online schooling, right? Right. So when I was at Photo Memorial, a lot of miracle things happened. People would go to school with me, strangers, and help me write my coursework. I couldn't move or do anything at this point in my life. Wow. So angels was just coming around me and supporting me on my journey to be successful. So eventually, I graduated uh, with a bachelor's degree in business administration from the University of Phoenix. I went on to Full Sail University and pursued a master's degree in business, and we accomplished that. Okay, I didn't yes, realize sir. you had a master's. Okay. Yeah, 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 man. So we just keep going and we keep growing and uh, just trying to expand, man, to inspire our community and better our community. Wow, that is, that is uh, inspiration, man, because, you know, so many, like you said, you had the tragic accident yeah. um, playing football. Um, and so many of us who are abled, don't have that what it takes in here yeah. and that's when we talk about being an entrepreneur it, you have to have something in here that other people don't have oh yeah because the one thing i say about entrepreneurship is it's like a lion out there in the wild or any wild animal you got to get out there and hunt because yeah. yeah. otherwise yeah. you're you not got, eating you got talk about hunt. that a little bit yeah you got to hunt man and and that's probably the biggest challenge uh, that those that uh, that start out to you know to in entrepreneurship in the business world, um, you know it, it's it, it's a hustle to a degree, but then it's 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 kind of like a, a, a you got to almost adopt it as a livelihood, right? Like 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 you have to live. Well, it's straight live. up hustle. Now. Yeah, you know when yeah, it comes, it to, it's a hustle. You it is. Know, it get is. Out there it is. Hustle, it's a of. hustle, man. That you that you can't you know like there's no rest about it. You know what I mean? especially when it comes to transportation and, and the role that we play in supply chain. It's about going out there, you know, being up four o'clock in the morning before everyone, you know, uh, up with the birds and, and hunting for shippers and distributors and retailers that need our services. So, right. yeah. And, and talk about that. You know, we just obviously, um, we just had our symposium and, and logis uh, yeah. our symposium and business leaders lunch and the focus was log logistics and supply chain. Talk about your business model, as you said, 
you know, you had to get up at 4 or 4.30 before everybody else because, you know, those trucks are on the road delivering uh, before people get to their destination of whether they're going shopping or whatever it is that whatever business they're going to, whether they're going. Because supply chain logistics deals with pretty much everything. Um, whether you taking a trip to the hospital, the items that the hospital needs have to get there, so on and so forth. So talk about that a little bit. Yes, yeah, so well, our international transport, we're a 3PL freight brokerage firm, which means that we're the middleman between the shippers and the carriers to have products delivered to their end point. So what we typically do is get up first thing in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, I'm setting up my desk, I'm setting up my, my workspace, and I'm getting on the line and I'm cold calling. We're cold calling shippers and we're cold calling distributors and retailers to see what freight they have that needs to be moved in our region. And then we contract with our carriers, right? We get our carriers. And right now it's an interesting space because um, the world is all about net zero, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about helping the climate and, and, and the environment. So now we're branching off into the space of dealing with carriers that are electric, right? And are okay. hydrogen ran so that we can also be a part of protecting our community. But for the most um, part, our day consists of on the lines, on the internet, reaching out to retailers, reaching out to distributors and, and, uh, and those that have cargo. Okay, now I know since the pandemic hit, there have been a lot of challenges yeah. with, with everything, with supply chain period, uh, logistics, um, getting, uh, well, the world pretty much gets, I don't know what the percentage is of goods from China. So getting goods over here, I know 60, 90 days, six months behind. But even outside of that, drivers. I know that has been a challenge. Yes, it thing. has. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so right now, because of inflation, right, because of the pandemic and inflation and, and the Fed interest rates, uh, these, these operators and, and, and these trucking companies aren't able to survive this environment. So it's been extremely difficult finding um, carriers that can move cargo at the rates that shippers are willing to pay today. So we're getting real creative with, um, with our partners, with our carrier partners, and with our shipping partners, and we're having conversations, uh, real conversations that are saying, hey, you know, these are essential needs that uh, the world needs, and uh, we need to get pricing on, on point, and we need to uh, strategize um, with our shippers and with our carriers to make sure that each party is able to operate, you know, in order for us to get our jobs done. Yeah, and, and again, I know that um, this whole thing with, and I'm going back to the drivers, because obviously nothing's moving without drivers. Nothing's moving. And a lot of folks... Um, they're just not finding them. But before we get into that, we're gonna be taking a little break. Um, you've been in business how long now? Two years now. Two years? Yes, sir. Okay. And again, we're gonna take a little break, but before we get there, I want you to think about, again, what made you decide on doing this business versus another business? Mm -hmm. But before we go there, have a break, hear from one of our supporters, and we'll be right back. At Convey, we're not only dedicated to solving today's biggest challenges facing healthcare organizations, we're also committed to predicting and planning for tomorrow's challenges by uniting a family of companies. We combine powerful technology with robust data analytics to deliver integrated end-to-end -end solutions that achieve meaningful results. Start your journey towards transformative business performance with Convey. And welcome back to the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce um, Member Connection. And I'm here with Felton Brown, owner of Alpha International Insurance. Alpha International. I got a couple members who have yeah, that Alpha, name. Alpha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ken Cross. <laughs> Thinking of uh, Gary Harris and, <laughs> and Alpha One Staffing, yeah, yeah. Alpha International. Yeah. Um, you know, we were talking about the challenges we have with drivers. Right. What, what made you decide that transportation was the right thing for you to do? You know what, man? Um, 
as an entrepreneur, you don't get it right the first time, right? Right. So um, I went through a few different industries. Okay. You know, just trying to figure out what works and, you know, what works for me and uh, my situation being disabled. And so I went through a few different industries and, and eventually, um, after doing my research, market research, just finding out what's lucrative, right, um, what's needed and, and what isn't going anywhere is probably the most important um, decision point that I made when, when getting into transportation and supply chain logistics. So um, here in Florida, it was a no-brainer, right? Okay. After doing the research, you know, we're a peninsula, we're pretty much an island, and we have uh, every mode there is when it comes to transportation and moving freight around. Yeah. So we have the number one airport in, in, in Miami International uh, moving freight, and then we have uh, the Port Miami uh, that is not only just a cargo, but also a crew line, a, sorry, cruise line, um, you know, um, and then we also have rail. Right. So um, I saw the opportunity there where um, if I leveraged it properly, that I can be uh, profitable and successful in it. So, and then I'm right here in Opelika, so we're a, 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 um, a, um, a, um, an industrial city right. uh, that moves freight, you know, throughout the, uh, the city daily. And then we have Opelika Airport that's moving cargo there as well. So it was a no-brainer for me to uh, to get involved in, uh, with the players and, and understand what the industry is and learn as much as I can and be mentored by some of the greats in the industry and uh, find my success there. Okay. Um, and what would you say is one of the biggest challenges in, in, the, in the industry? Obviously, um, what you have started this business, being an entrepreneur and, um, and dealing with logistics, it's, again, it's worldwide. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, 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 always, I, I always get, um, I don't know whether to say it's excited, but it, it just, it blows me away when I see the trains going by with all those containers yeah, on it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and when I see a truck and I see a double, double truck, I'm like, I, in my mind, I'm like, God, you just think of all whatever's inside there yeah. and it's going somewhere to take care of, you know, a community or whatever. It, it really, I don't know, I don't know whether the word, like I said, the word is ex, excites me, excites me, but I, I really look at it and it, it hits me. So and you're dealing with that every day. Right. Tell me, you know, tell me about that and that that whole feeling of what you're doing. I mean, you you're basically taking care of the world, taking care of a Yeah, community. and that's how I feel, but we I honestly feel like 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 a servant. And 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 this is important for me, right? To feel to be of service to others and 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 to be um what we want to say, what the unsung hero, right? The one right. that no one sees uh but 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 getting the job done and is it and is a and is it is an important element to our day-to-day -day living. Uh, my, myself, um, you know, what sparked this idea also of Alpha International Transport was when the, the pandemic happened, um, I was one of those people that felt um, the effects of it on a major level because I rely on uh, certain medical supplies to come in on time for me to have a certain quality of life. Right. And so when the pandemic happened, um, these medical supplies were no longer coming on time. Wow. If they came at all. Okay. So that sparked, you know, in my brain that, hey, you know, there's some help that's needed on the front end here in supply chain. And so that's when I came in with the idea with my partner of freight brokering and making sure that uh, these essential things are being, you know, shipped out on time until where they need to be. Right, right, right. But again, like I said, I'm sitting at a railroad and I'm watching all these cargo containers go by yeah. and the port. You know, like you said, we have one of the busiest ports. We yes. got the far as international, um, our airport, Miami International, international. has the uh, largest importer of, um, of medical supplies yeah. into, from South America and the Caribbean and flowers. Do you deal with any of the perishables at all? Perishables is actually our our uh, our key um, our key commodity to move here in South Florida. Can, can so, you explain to people what that is? Yeah. So, and before I do that, let me go a little bit, you know, a little bit more as as far as um, so when it comes to cargo and moving commodities like like this, it's plentiful, right? So when we're first getting in, obviously we're looking to move pretty much whatever we can, right? Whatever right. comes through the doors, 
we're looking to move it. So that's probably the uh, the beginning challenge. But then you want to go into finding what your niche is. Okay. So here in South Florida, like you said, um, you know, Latin America and the Caribbeans are bringing in parachute boots by the boatload, right? right. I, I mean, we're talking about flowers, mangoes, apples, bananas, you know, whatever you may have, um, you know, they're bringing them in. So we're seeing that opportunity um, here in South Florida for us to take advantage of. So that is indeed um, our angle is perishable. So we're talking about cold storage, right? Okay. Understanding um, the warehouse space and how uh, these goods need to be transported and protected uh, for the customer and the whole nine yards. Okay. And you talk about cold storage. Explain that a little bit to folks who may not understand. So because, here, again, um, you got to protect the goods. Right, right. So these goods that are coming over are coming over, and, I mean, we're talking, uh, you know, 48,000 pounds, you know, um, every shipment in a truck. So these shipments need to be kept at a controlled temperature. Okay. So that's what cold storage comes in at. So we may need uh, the, these temperatures to be at a continuous 34 degrees. We got to make sure that this is what, you know, that temperature is so that these goods don't spoil. Right. Because once they spoil, unlike, you know, electronics that may fall down and may get a scratch, we can still sell it. We can't spell, sell uh, spoiled goods when it comes to perishables. Right. Um, again, starting a logistic, logistics company, do you own trucks or do you um, contract with truckers? So we're a non-asset uh, freight brokerage firm, so we don't own anything. Okay. And, and we believe that's our advantage, uh, is that we don't own anything. So we keep a low overhead, and we're able to provide our customers the best option because there's no bias on our end, right? Like, we're not trying to move their goods with our trucks only. So we're contracting the best carrier. We're doing the, the um, a vetting process for our, our customers to make sure that the carriers that we do use to transport their goods are the best that are available in that moment. You know, obviously, we're the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, um, focusing on black business, uh, minorities, and women. Um, do you have a sense of how many black-owned companies there are like you? When you say harmony, Com a, a, um, a sense of how many owned, how many black owned companies are in logistics? Oh yeah, man, we, we, we are very prideful about that. As a matter of fact, uh, the Mayor Opalaka, Mr. John Taylor, had just told us a few days ago that we were actually the first black owned uh, logistics company in Opalaka. Okay. So we took a great pride in that and we take a great pride in understanding that we need to expand our brand, expand our company so that more black and brown boys and girls can understand the opportunity that's in supply chain and logistics and show them that uh, it's an opportunity that, that you can achieve and yeah. And so what would you tell someone who is interested in getting in, into supply chain or logistics? Go for it. Stop thinking and jump. <laughs> this, this. Go for it. Stop thinking and jump. The opportunity is there. Uh, you will learn as you go. Um, obviously you should, um, you know, get vested you know, in the industry by, by learning as much as you can on your own. But to just get in somewhere, you know, take a job somewhere to understand uh, what logistics is about, what supply chain is about, and then just go from there. But the opportunity is there for, for all of us here in South Florida. And I would love to see South Florida to um, get more involved in uh, supply chain. So if someone wants to get in touch with Alpha uh, International, how can they do that? Oh, LinkedIn, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, Felton Brown. Our company's on LinkedIn, Alpha International Transport, and our website, aitransport.us. Okay. Well, this has been the Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce Member Connection. If you want to know more about the Chamber, go to 305-751-8648 or go to m-dcc.org and find out more. And to become a member of Chamber, just check out check our member page. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, Felton.